Welcome back. President Biden and former President Trump will have one less opponent to worry about in November. That's because No Labels now says that it is ending its 2024 effort because they have no candidate. The bipartisan group says it was not able to identify candidates with a credible path to winning the White House to run on a third party ticket. That announcement today, it could ease some Democrats concerns about a potential centrist spoiler candidate. But there are other third party candidates on the ballot and NBC News has new reporting on why Democrats are, quote, freaking out about one candidate in particular. You could likely guess RFK Jr. NBC News senior digital politics reporter Alex Seitzwald broke that story and he is joining us now. For a lot of Democrats, I think it's like a hooray moment, right? The no labels ticket is not going to be on the ballot. But RFK Jr. right now has really been the threat that Democrats have been so heavily focused on, even mo mobilizing efforts to try to deal with him right now. Why do they think he is a bigger threat to Joe Biden than he is to Donald Trump? Yeah, I mean, it's the history of just in my lifetime, Democrats have lost two presidencies, they think, because of left wing spoiler candidates, Ralph Nader in 2000 and Jill Stein in 2016. This election is going to be so close, Democrats think, that if even a small fraction of voters, one, two percent in some key swing states, go for RFK instead of uh, for Joe Biden, they think that could be the decisive thing that puts Donald Trump over the top. They're especially concerned after he rolled out his vice presidential uh pick Nicole Shanahan, not only because she's going to potentially bring a lot of money to the ticket that they need to get on the ballot. The former wife of Google founder, Sergey Brin. Very importantly, yes. Uh, but also because the way they talk about it, they're positioning themselves more to the left. She's a former Democratic donor. He's obviously a former Democrat. They're saying, hey, if you're an ex-Democrat, if you're dissatisfied with the Democratic Party, come join us. The water's warm. So what does that mobilization look like? What is this effort? I mean, I've been hearing about a campaign and been directed to contacts to call about their efforts. What are they specifically doing? Yeah, there's a lot going on. There are super PACs, plural, that have been started just to combat third parties. The DNC has its own operation. They have mobile billboards going around Kennedy events to kind of uh, troll him. There's big legal efforts going on to try to keep Kennedy off the ballot uh, wherever possible. And this is a totally different approach from how they've handled third party candidates in the past, which was basically just to ignore them, yeah. pretend they don't exist. So now they are you know, loading the hopper with millions of dollars to potentially pummel them if they need to. Oh, Alex, among the real challenges as I try to report this out as well, right, is, is, the, is why Democrats think that someone who is eyeing RFK Jr. right now would come around and vote for Joe Biden or, I mean, presumably these are people who are more inclined to vote for, for Biden in the past, right? And now if they're not going to vote for Joe Biden this time, wouldn't they just pick another third party person or, or sit it out altogether. I mean, in either case, they face a real challenge here. That's definitely one of the issues. And, and one voter that we spoke to who was at the uh, RFK VP event said that if uh, she doesn't end up voting for RFK, she would likely vote Green Party instead. So there's a kind of, you know, multidimensional chess that has to be going on here. But the main point they want to make is that a vote for anybody other than Joe Biden is a vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. And isn't Donald Trump scary? You can't reelect him. So that's going to be their number one message. And the people that they're most concerned about, these kind of margin Originally attached voters, as they call them, to the Democratic Party, low propensity voters, especially young men of color. Pay attention to there. That's where a lot of this game is going to be played. Yeah, I hear the same thing as I do the reporting. It's always validating when someone else is reporting <laughs> similar things. Here's something not too dissimilar. Alex, nice to see you. Thanks for your reporting and for sharing it with us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.